Hello, I'm Do Hun Lee, and I'm currently working as a postdoc, postdoc in Professor Sun Kim's group and at Seoul National University. Um, it's a great honor to be a uh, presenter in this SNUA summer school here. And today I'm going to uh, share my recent work about cracking the codes of gene regulation through transformers. As many of you have noticed that this work is a life science study using AI as a computational toolkit. So in detail, um, this study covers the field of epigenetics in life science. So I think that many of, uh, some of you in this AI summer school may not be familiar with biology, so I'll give you some very high level brief summary about the biological concepts uh, needed for uh, understanding this study. So this is to make you understand the motivation of this study, so please uh, give me some few minutes. So cells is the basic units of life, and all the organs and tissues are made up of cells. And inside the cells, there's a compartment named nucleus, and inside the nucleus, we have DNA. And DNA can be represented as a character, a string of three billion characters that three billion characters that consist of A, C, G, and T. And as you may know, DNA encodes the information of life. The whole information encoded in the DNA is called genome, and the unit of the information is called gene. And interestingly, many of the cells in our body uh, shares the identical genomes, but how can the cells look so different and have different functions? And it is because the different cell types only uses a different subset of genomic information. The utilization of genomic information is called gene expression, and therefore different cell types have different gene expression patterns. Then, how is the gene expression pattern is established? What regulates gene expression? Indeed, there are many factors that regulate gene expression. In this study, we want to focus on histones. The histone proteins coexist with DNA inside the nucleus. In fact, the DNA is wrapping the histone, histone proteins. As the histone protein is one of the most tightly associated protein with DNA, so there are chemical modifications, or also called as histone modifications, is one of the major factors that regulate gene expression. There are so many types of histone modification, therefore you can imagine the complexity of the combination of histone modifications. And here comes the histone code hypothesis. It states that the combination of histone modification encodes the information on gene expression. Biologists have long been studying this concept, so there is an essential qualitative rules for histone code hypothesis already exist, but this, the motivation of this study is to decipher the histone code quantitatively. That means that we want to build a model that translates the histone code to the amount of gene expression. That reduces the motivation to the question saying that, can you build a model that predicts gene expression using histone codes? There's one more thing that our model is trying to deal with. It is called three-dimensional chromatin interactions, and I'm going to uh, explain it briefly. It seems it is almost impossible for DNA to be fit into the nucleus because it is too long. The DNA is two meters, but the size of the nucleus is four micrometers. But surprisingly, it is possible through the compact and well-organized uh, folding mechanism. This, this example shows one snapshot of the DNA folded into the nucleus. And this folding seems totally random, but it is not. Actually, the precise folding of the DNA is important for the gene regulation. And imagine that the two genomic regions that are far away in one dimensional uh, view of the DNA can be located closely 
in the three-dimensional space of the DNA. So this kind of gene regulation mechanism is called cis regulation. And the genomic regions or elements participating in this cis regulation is called cis regulatory elements or CREs. And now I'm going to briefly introduce the model, uh, proposed model architecture. So, so uh, in this study, we are proposing a transformer based model called chromoformer. And uh, the two main, uh, chromoformer has two main strategies. First, chromoformer tries to efficiently model longer histone codes using transformers. And secondly, transformer uh, tries to incorporate cis regulatory information. Before uh, diving into the model architecture detail, uh, it is better introducing the input features of this study. Uh, we use histone codes, but histone codes are here represented as one-dimensional signals with seven channels, where each of the channels are uh, each of the channel denotes each of the each of the different types of hist histone modifications, and we use the histone code signals at target promoter regions where the gene expression initiates and uh, the most of the gene regulation takes place. Additionally, we use the histone code signals at CRE, cis regulatory region, at most eight cis regulatory regions. And here is the full model architecture. Chromoformer combines the embeddings of three different resolutions of histone codes. And and it predicts the gene expression through a fully, fully connected layers. And let me, uh, let me introduce in more detail. And the one a single resolution chromoformer module uh, consists of three different uh, transformer encoder layers. And each of the transformer encoder um, models the different layers of gene regulations. First, uh, the embedding transformer uh, produces the embedding for the histone code at the core promoter using self tension, And then pairwise interaction transformer tries to model one-to-one -one interaction between promoter and cis regulatory elements. It produces an embedding for each of the interaction using encoder-decoder attention. And finally, the promoter embedding and the interaction embeddings are fed into the regulation transformer, and the regulation transformer learns the collective effect of the uh, cis regulations and produces the final regulatory embeddings. And I'm going to describe the experimental results and also uh, so give you some rough interpretation of biological insights. So, first of all, Chromoformer, uh, we observed that Chromoformer outperformed all the existing deep learning baseline models in predicting gene expression in various tasks such as binary classification, expression regression tasks, and full change regression tasks. Also, to be more confident with our models, we tried to conduct uh, an experiment to show that the two strategies of chromoformers were actually working. First, we want to demonstrate that the transformer were actually efficiently, uh, the transformers were actually efficiently modeling longer histone codes. So, we varied the length of the histone codes and trained all the baseline models and all our models too, and observed that uh, using longer histone codes, resulted in severe performance degradation for all the benchmark models, but not in our models, supporting that the transformer was actually working in modeling the longer histone code signals. Additionally, we want to show that the cis regulatory information we are, ad we are adding to the model are actually working. So we conducted ablation study by discarding all the all the model uh, model compartments that are required to model cis regulations, and observe 
significant performance degradation, supporting that this regulation was actually contributing to contributing to the model performance. And so far, we can conclude some technical conclusions like this. First, uh, chromophore's performance is good, and second, the longer histone code with transformer actually were effective. And finally, the cis regulatory interactions were actually contributing. And I'll finish this talk by giving you some rough biological insights drawn from the model interpretations. So first, uh, we analyzed the self-attention weights of embedding transformer and observed that transcription initiation signal, uh, which is which is the signal initiating the gene expression, are attending to the transcription elongation signal, which is the signal that accelerates or stabilize the, uh, stabilizes the gene expression. That means the chromophore uh, learned the dependencies between transcription initiation and transcription elongation to predict the overall gene expression levels. Uh, this was further supported by evaluating the elongation signal and observing that the observing the performance degradation and disappearing attentions. And next, we want to have some interpretation on uh, what the uh, chromophore learned about cis regulations. So we try to analyze this by. Uh, by dissecting, dissecting to the dynamics of latent embeddings. We quantified the discrepancy between the two embeddings aware of and not aware of 3D interactions. And we considered this value as a predicted cis regulatory impact or PCRI. In comparing the PCRI values between normal liver and liver cancer cells, identified a subset of genes and by curating, uh, by some manual creation, we identified that uh, identified there exists some uh, markers of liver cancers were differentially cis-regulated. We were even possible to pinpoint uh, cis-regulatory regions that were differentially active uh, between normal liver and liver cancer. That means we want to uh, we could pinpoint the region, cis regulatory region, that are only active at liver cancers. And finally, I examined the association between the number of cis regulatory elements and PCRI values and revealed that the number uh, re revealed that the cis regulation for the activation of gene had linear dynamics and also and on the other hand the uh, the cis regulation for the suppression of genes had switch like or logistic dynamics. And we could propose a hypothetical model like this. And finally, we can conclude, uh, we can draw a biological conclusion from the model interpretation. First, uh, chromo chromophore captured the dependencies between histone codes. And secondly, it allows differential cis regulation analysis using latent embeddings. And finally, uh, it learned the kinetics of, the, uh, kinetics of cis regulation. And overall, this study shows the great potential of AI-based modeling of biological sequences and also emphasizes the importance of specialized deep learning architecture effectively embedded with biological prior knowledge. And this work could not be done without the advice of Sun Kim and help of my colleague Jiwon Yang and all the other my lab mates. And thank you.